So we're going to look at a quite an interesting subject, uh, macro photography as it's called. Now, I don't do macro photography. I, it's the sort of thing I feel, I love the science of photography. It's the thing I fiddle with when it's raining uh, and you can't go out. Uh, so you know, I don't have a huge extensive collection of, of um, macro equipment, but I do understand the science. And it, it, it's, if you're a nerd, and you love about optics then it's quite enjoyable okay so macro is sort of beyond one-to-one -one magnification of an object i'll give you um i'll show you some go we'll talk about some pictures in a minute and i'll show you what i mean and it obviously when you see those amazing photos of like eyes of wasps and things like that that's macro photography and basically what you need is i mean there's a very simple one here i've got the a Tamron SP 90mm 1. F2.5. This gives you what's two to one uh, photography, but you can't, that's not obviously macro, that's near, that's not one to one. So to do that, to get extra magnification with a lens, you need to move it away from the camera. So when Tamron came out with their solution, they give you a thing called extension tubes. Now what these do is they move the back, they move the back of the uh, the lens uh, element away from the sensor, and doing so increases the magnification. So if you pop this extension tube in, you now get one to one magnification. You get macro. Now extension tubes are fine, and you can stack extension tubes to get additional magnification. And also you can use you know it, it's not just the focal length of the lens but you want a flat image and you normally get that flat images over 80 80 mil you get like a nice flat image so you want to move the further you move it away the greater the magnification so basically that's the fundamentals now there's obviously you've got extension tubes but there's another thing called bellows i don't own bellows i think my wife would kill me if i brought a set of those in here bellows do exactly the same as extension tubes but they're more flexible you mount the camera on a rail system and then as you move the bellows away, then you get your magnification and you can focus with it, much like as you spin this out here. I hope this isn't, you can show. I'm focusing so you can actually move the, the bellows rail backwards and forwards. And you, can, and you can get your macro and you get your magnification, you get your great image. However, there's a problem. Now I'm just gonna show you um, very quickly some uh, macro i'm going to show you the, okay so this first one this first image is two to one magnification shot is a it's a jar of elton john limited edition marmite and if you don't know what marmite is it's like vegemite for australians it's a yeast thing in the united kingdom it's really nice we really hate it anyway the debate's always out on marmite so this is two to one this is the front the label of the marmite okay so the next shot i've got here this is one-to-one. -one. So this is a one-to-one -one representation shot with macro. But if you jump back between these two photos, you can see a bit of a problem. Okay, you can see that on the on this photo, the focus drops off left and right on the edge of the photograph. And basically, you, because you've got such a thin field of focus, if I jump to one-to-one, -to -one, you can see it's even more extreme. Now, You've got like depth of field stepping in. So what do you do? The, you know, first off, you can step down your aperture all the way down to like F22, which I think this shot is at F22. And so all of a sudden, you know, you've got more in focus, but it's not enough. And you can't really go, you, you've got trouble when you um, go to F22 and F16 with um, what's it called, refraction and other optical effects coming to play when you, you know, you're that you've got that much you're that sort of like tight down on the shutter on the on the blade so that's okay but you know you want a picture if you were doing like a, a fly or a, something like that you want it all to be in focus so in the modern day we've got a system that's called focus stacking now in a digital camera you know it's really really simple <laughs> you basically take uh, one photograph then you refocus take another photograph you refocus take another photograph and you sort of move through that whole plane. Then you take all those still images and you dump them into a thing called Lightroom. And Lightroom's got a feature in there which will stitch these images together and give you 
a completely you know clean image but i mean to do this you can you can shoot upwards of 100 photographs sometimes to get an absolutely purely in focus object as you move through the focus plane so that's you know that's the modern solution but the one that interests me and, and uh, got me really interested was how did you do it with film because you can't focus stack film how did they get those national geographical guys and, and people take photographs with film but not use focus stacking because it's not something that you can do so i did some research it's fascinating well being a bit of an like, optical image nerd and it fascinated me now you may have heard of this effect you may have heard of the lenses there's lenses out there called um tilt shift they're actually called their actually full name is swing tilt shift and they move uh, you move the lens in a different direction in front of the camera i'll do a whole thing about swing and tilt shift lenses but the bit that we're going to talk about is tilt now say you've got like a a lens in front of a camera and you tilt it uh sort of tilt it down and away and it's a big enough lens to cover the entire image circle this is the thing about tilt shift lenses that there's much more glass in them because of the much bigger image circle you can tilt it a very interesting and weird effect comes into play now if you google this you look for it or you, you watch videos on this on on tilt you'll hear something called the shim plinth principle or the shim plinth i can't pronounce it basically shim plinth was a austrian um, army officer um, aviation officer i think who was interested in aerial photography and enlargement and it all comes to rise you hear his name a lot but it isn't actually him who created this and what this effect is is as you you've got planes of focus and as you tilt the planes of the lens the plane of focus changes so fundamentally you can move your focus into lines so if you tilt your camera 45 degrees and then you tilt your lens then you'll actually lay the focus down so you can shoot all the way through something in focus so so it wasn't simply it was actually a french engineer and inventor called Carpentier who actually first put this as a patent in 1901 and then Schimplinth found this and took that work further and but you know it's one of those things it's like people get lost in history as to who did what we all call it the Schimplinth principle but it was actually Cartier who'd come up had sort of worked out how this worked in the first place it's like um you know everybody thinks Henry Ford invented the motor car then the uh, motor car aficionados well, actually tell you it was a guy called Daimler or a guy called Benz but the actual guy that invented the motor car is a guy called George Brayton and Siegfried Marcus of Venice they they, they displayed a, the first motor car in 1875 but you, nobody knows who these people are it's like history is great isn't it you get the actual people who um created these things sometimes get like washed away into history anyway Cartier Carpentier had patented it in 1901 and so Schimplinth's principal part is an extension of his patent so but he got the naming you know it's like Edison and Edison who's the other guy I can't remember his name but you know the whole you know, thing with the lighting wars and DC and all this sort of business but yeah so everybody calls it the Schimplinth printer we'll stick with that for now but it was really Carpentier who, who sort of came up with it so yeah so what it does is you tilt so this is amazing so how do you do this so what you then do is you combine your bellows with a lens with an end that tilts and so you get your magnification and you tilt the lens with the bellows and uh, the way to do it if you wanted to do it with film you'd need a massive lens in the front so the way to do it would be to bolt on a medium format lens on the front and then you've got your bellows you tilt your medium format lens because you need extra glass to do this and take a photograph and then literally the plane of focus would go through the object and everything would be in focus it's absolutely um incredible sort of like um, technology it's like there's no autofocus involved no it, it's purely how optics work it, it absolutely fascinates me so i mean have a look around at um macro photography online there's some great videos there's a i'm going to put a link in the bottom there's a guy who does food photography and he's got like the full it's called a cambo full setup of how to do this and he actually takes you through the principle and shows you how this works it, it fascinates me but i mean i'm not going to go down that road yet. i'm not that kind of person that does that kind of photography but the science of it does interestingly an awful lot i mean but if you want to get into it you can get these um 
Tamron SP 2.5s for, for not much. And this, this is an utterly incredible piece of glass. It's like sharper than some of the cinema Zeiss lenses I've used. It's incredible. And you can pick up the extension tube for, um, I got this for 40 quid. And then you can take photographs with it if you want to and have a play with it. I mean, obviously with digital cameras, you can get into the realms of focus stacking. It's really easy to do. Some of the digital cameras actually have, I think the Pentax 645 has it, but they actually have the mechanism built in into software to focus stack for you. So it will actually change the focusing step for you and go, go forward. And there's some other really cool software to do it. But yeah, so macro photography, it's really interesting. There are some other things you need to consider. You need to light it really, really well. And you need consistent lighting when you do it. And, you know, so well lit, you know, you can use like a time flat, you can use flashes, there's loads of ways to do it, but really light it well. Then you step through and you'll get absolutely fantastic photographs. I mean, I just, um, there's a couple here, let me just bring up one. That I was just, when I was mucking around with this lens. Okay, so this is the skin of a lemon. And this is uh, basically, I've got the, I've got this sort of closed, I've got this probably F point. 5.6 or something and then i opened it stopped it down opened it up and now it's at f22 and you can sort of see it's there's a lot more in focus with this but it's still not right because you want to have the focus travel all the way through the image anything else i've got on here there's a flower statement from a flower there we go but i mean you can make beautiful photographs with that it's a great thing to do when it's raining you can't go out but if you want to do it with film, then you're going to have to buy some equipment. You can sort of do it with the bellows and the macro, the bellows and stuff like that. But you're still going to always hit those problems with the, the focus. But anyway, I hope that's enjoyable. It's a fascinating subject. It's something to play with when you've got a bit of time on your hands. And it makes utterly beautiful photographs. So, okay. So that's it. Thanks for watching.